Okay, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am uh, Markus Eisenbach uh, from Oak Ridge uh, National Laboratory, and um, I'm welcoming you to talk on um, uh, uh, today's uh, um, workshop about uh, first principles uh, uh, calculations of uh, materials. Um, I'll, uh, I will give an introduction into uh, density functional theory, overview of a multiple scattering theory uh, uh, for solving uh, density functional, uh, the density functional theory equations, and also um, methods uh, to deal with uh, disorder uh, in these uh, uh, systems. Uh, and afterwards, uh, Dr. Yang Wang uh, uh, will um, give uh, an introduction into the use of uh, the um, multiple scattering code that we have uh, developed. Sorry. So, why first principles uh, uh, calculations of materials? Um, uh, last uh, week, uh, um, uh, Prof Professor Teletska uh, told you about uh, model approaches of uh, understanding uh, the um, um, uh, qualitative behavior of materials, what effect this order has. Um, but uh, we are also interested in uh, knowing what, it, what a specific material uh, does. And uh, all materials are made up of atoms and uh, the properties of a, a specific material or compound is determined by which chemical elements make it up and how they are arranged in space. Um, so while the nuclei determine which element that there is, uh, the uh, most important uh, properties for us in material science, condensed metaphysics and chemistry uh, come from um, and the electrons that move between the nuclei and basically form the glue that holds the chemical bonds uh, together. And uh, those are responsible for electric and magnetic properties. You see uh, uh, ma magnetism is determined by um, the behavior of uh, the electrons, how they move and how uh, their spins arrange. Uh, the, the color, which is actually in, in the case of gold, uh, for example, very, very interesting uh, uh, relativistic effect you can see. Um, it, it is due to uh, the relativistic uh, uh, motion of uh, the electrons and the, these heavy uh, elements like gold or um, uh, semiconductors uh, where uh, the um, actually defects play and uh, uh, impurities play a very uh, important uh, role in determining what are the um, electric uh, properties are that uh, can be used to build um, uh, transistors and uh, essentially the device uh, you're uh, uh, watching this on now. Uh, so we, we want to uh, solve uh, the um, quantum mechanics of how these electrons move in this solid and uh, solve uh, uh, the uh, Schrodinger equation for of these electrons for real material. So how, how does uh, the uh, uh, Schrodinger e equation uh, look like. I've uh, put it up here. 
uh, and you see it is a, um, a partial differential equation uh, that, uh, um, oh, okay. let's see if I can have a point. Uh, So um, you, you'll have uh, uh, contributions from the motion of uh, the electrons, uh, that's the kinetic uh, energy part, uh, the external potential that is basically given uh, by any external uh, uh, fields and the uh, um, and uh, the uh, presence of uh, the nuclei on the movement of the electrons, and then the electron-electron interaction. And uh, as we'll see, this is actually what makes uh, this whole uh, uh, problem really hard to do. Also, uh, ultimately, uh, we also have to account for what is the interaction between the nuclei. This uh, is uh, um, if we are just interested in the electrons, we can um, just regard this as an, um, a classical energy offset. <clears throat> so um, if we have many electrons in the system, n electrons, uh, this is described by these uh, many electron uh, uh, wave function, which is basically a function that depends on the coordinates of all uh, the uh, electrons in the system. And uh, this is, uh, if you wanted to solve this directly, uh, this is uh, computationally unfeasibly expensive. Um, And uh, just to illustrate uh, why it is so expensive, uh, it has to do with the uh, dimensionality of this problem. So uh, just assume we could solve the Schrödinger equation for this many body electron uh, uh, wave functions. H how much uh, memory would we just need to store those if we, uh, just naively assume, and one could do it perhaps uh, um, more um, intelligently, but the uh, fundamental um, um, the concept uh, still remains. If we just tabulate them on a, a thousand uh, points for each electron position, so that's just a 10 by 10 by 10 uh, grid, uh, so a very coarse grid, uh, spatial grid on which we will tabulate this. And we'll have to do this uh, for n electrons. How much memory uh, uh, do we need? Uh, the wave function is a complex number. A complex number uh, requires 16 bytes in memory. So if we just want to store one electron, say, describe a hydrogen atom, that's just 16 kilobytes. That, that's easy. Two electrons, um, 16 megabytes, um, that uh, is a substantial amount of memory, but no problem. Three electrons, 16 gigabytes. Not every computer uh, um, has that much memory. That's basically uh, 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 sort of uh, the limit that you could do on, on a, a, a single uh, uh, computer for electrons and just uh, uh, that would just be beryllium atom already would uh, require 16 terabytes of memory. That's about uh, sort of order of magnitude, uh, one, uh, one hard disk of memory. Uh, six electrons, a single carbon electrons. So, so we are just looking at the electrons in a single uh, atom. We are not uh, doing any materials yet. Um, 
and that's uh, 16 times 10 to the 18 uh, byte. That's uh, a million hard disks. And in, in general, as, as you see, if we have L N electrons, uh, um, that um, um, amount of uh, memory we need uh, basically grows exponentially. And uh, it's not only the memory, but also the computation, because I mean, if, if you were to compute this, you would have to touch uh, each memory uh, location at, at least once. So also computationally, we know um, that the effort has to grow exponentially. So except for the very uh, simplest uh, 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 molecules or uh, atoms, it is totally unfeasible uh, to directly solve the many body Schrodinger equation. Um, and I haven't even talked about the, uh, the problem that comes uh, from the uh, fact uh, that um, electrons are fermions. That is, if you change uh, the uh, position of uh, two electrons, the wave functions have to change signs, which um, provides uh, additional uh, computational complexity. Uh, so um, now we obviously can not solve uh, the many body problem uh, uh, for um, a real material, uh, for the electrons and real material exactly. So instead we'll have to devise some uh, methods uh, that reduce the co complexity of these calculations and uh, do this by introducing some approximations. In uh, chemistry and physics, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, methods, uh, uh, some of them um, uh, have a uh, approximate uh, description of uh, the full many body problem like uh, configuration interaction, which is uh, the most expensive of these methods, coupled cluster, uh, quantum Monte Carlo, um, which reduce um, the expense, but are still very expensive methods in their own right. What we are doing is we use a, a method called density functional theory. And uh, that is based on of the very famous uh, observation by Hornberg and Korn in the 1960s that um, the many body, the ground state uh, electron density, which is just a, a quantity that only depends on one coordinate. So uh, this is a, a much more manageable uh, amount of uh, data of information to deal with. Uh, minimizes a function now that uh, contains uh, the kinetic energy, the interaction with the external potential, uh, the interaction of the electrons uh, between each other, and oh, all the many body uh, uh, effects uh, we uh, sort of brush under the carpet and uh, call it exchange correlation functional, this EXC. Um, uh, Hornbeck and Korn uh, prove that this exists, but um, we don't know exactly what it is. But if we knew this, we could uh, very computationally efficiently calculate all the quantities we are interested in. And um, we have an um, approach called the Cohn-Shem uh, method to uh, calculate uh, these uh, densities by actually solving an effective one electron uh, 
uh, uh, Schrodinger equation that um, contains uh, these uh, this exchange correlation uh, uh, quantity. If we have a good exchange correlation functional, we are basically uh, in business. Uh, and the way uh, the calculation uh, works is we start out with a initial initial guess for some effective potential or density, solve uh, these cohn sham equations, and from those calculate new charge densities and check whether the new densities we get agree with our initial guess or not. We um, update the densities uh, with the new information we have and repeat until uh, we find um, the density that actually forms uh, the fixed point of this uh, uh, operation that is uh, the charge density that corresponds to the electron ground state. Uh, the way uh, we are uh, doing this in the MUST uh, method is uh, uh, multiple scattering theory is uh, we uh, solve uh, this using a Green's function method. Uh, uh, a green, the Green's function basically is a, uh, a kernel that solves a differential equation. In a sense, you can see it as uh, formally being uh, the inverse of uh, the uh, differential equation of the Hamiltonian. Um, I'm in um, the interest of time, not going into too much uh, detail, but uh, to find the density, what we'll need is basically to figure out how an electron scatters uh, throughout uh, uh, the uh, system and then returns uh, to the place where it started from. Um, and uh, we'll, we can do this in uh, reciprocal space by, uh, again, trans, uh, transforming um, the uh, um, multiple scattering, the uh, R positions into uh, uh, using a lattice Fourier transform and uh, transforming it into uh, the movement uh, in uh, the lattice. So um, important question we are interested in, and as uh, uh, you've seen last week, is there are very interesting things that happen if the system is disordered. If uh, the system has not a perfectly uh, periodic uh, crystal. And um, it's very important for understanding real materials such as uh, alloys, steel, bronze, brass, or um, semiconductors, as I said uh, before. Uh, so um, we are using two different uh, approaches for dealing with disordered and complex systems. Uh, one is uh, basically building a large uh, cell uh, where we randomly place uh, the atoms uh, so to make a um, computational uh, representation of uh, uh, the actual disorder of atoms and that is uh, done using this uh, uh, locally self-consistent multiple scattering method or um, as we'll, I'll show uh, now there is uh, the coherent potential approximation uh, where we average uh, the, pro the effect of the probabilistic uh, distribution of atoms. Uh, so um, the idea uh, here is that uh, these, uh, this scattering behavior of uh, the electrons uh, original originated from a site occupied by an atom of type A 
or originating from an atom of uh, type B uh, through a um, medium that is sort of uh, the average of uh, uh, the placements of A and B atoms has to um, uh, give you the correct, uh, basically the uh, beha scattering behavior of, uh, of a, a system that is averaged uh, according to the concentration of these atoms. The other method is uh, this uh, locally self-consistent uh, uh, scattering method. And there the idea is uh, that uh, instead of uh, considering all the possible uh, uh, scattering throughout the, uh, uh, of, of the electron throughout the in huge uh, 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 system, we uh, cut uh, the distance an electron is uh, allowed to travel. And doing this, uh, we, we are able to uh, get uh, the computational effort of, uh, um, elect uh, of solving these uh, cone stream equations down to uh, something that only increases linearly with the, the number of atoms in the system. And um, with, with this, I'm uh, ending. I, I'm happy to uh, entertain a, a number of brief questions before uh, uh, Dr. Yang Wang uh, will show you some examples of uh, how these uh, calculations are actually done in practice. Okay, um, any question? I had a question. Go ahead. Do you still have your presentation? Oh yeah, sure, sorry. Uh, Uh, could you return to where you first laid out the equation for density functional theory? Uh, which this one? Might have been after this. Slide five, four, five, oh, five? This yeah, one. five. Yeah. 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 So here you have this energy of the heart tree. So this is like heart tree Fock approximation. Uh, so this is uh, basically uh, here the Conor interaction. Uh, okay. And um, it it basically is uh, the uh, in, in um, the interaction of uh, the electrostatic interaction of uh, an an electron with. Uh, all uh, the other electron in the system, because it only depends on the uh, density. Um, actually, it also uh, uh, contains uh, some uh, spurious uh, interaction with the electron with itself, which is taken care of in this exchange correlation functional. Hmm. So, if that's the interaction of the electron with, let's just say, like if it's in some higher energy state, that's the interaction of that electron with every electron in every lower energy state. Uh, pa pan, could you could you repeat your question? Would that be the interaction of an electron in a higher energy state with every electron in every lower energy state? Uh, so. And this is, as I said, the, uh, uh, ground, uh, so the ground it, state. It's a, it's a theory of the ground state. So it's an interaction of one electron with, with all the other electrons in the system. Okay, yes, and it says the Cartier interaction. So then, do you even know what the form of the this exchange correlation function would look so, like? Uh, th there are, um, and if, if you. Uh, um, look, um, uh, if you just Google uh, exchange correlation functionals, uh, you'll find there are many different approximations. There are a number of 
exact properties uh, known um, um, that uh, may have to observe. Um, and um, it is well known what it would be for what's called a homogeneous electron gas. That is a system where there are no atoms, uh, um, uh, where the electron uh, density is just constant uh, throughout the system. And uh, from this and from um, various exact exact bounds that are known and uh, various uh, more um, exact calculations like uh, uh, those that I've mentioned up here, quantum Monte Carlo coupled cluster and so um, uh, people can uh, develop uh, and do develop better and better approximations for the uh, for this exact uh, for this exchange correlation functional, uh, but uh, the exact form is is not known, and that while um, the Hohenberg-Hohn uh, theorem tells us this is actually an exact expression, uh, given the fact that we don't know the exact form of the exchange correlation functional, it is an approximation to the uh, real behavior of the electrons. And then is this entire functional, uh, I'm not too familiar with all this, but is it some kind of come from some Lagrangian or some system or? Uh, is that where it's derived from, from Hohenbeck and Cohn? Uh, yes, you could, uh, could see it like that, yes. Okay. Um, 